Senator Skinner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, apologies, I wasn't present for the entire uh, comments from uh, witnesses or the public, though certainly as a co-author of the bill, I've uh, received many, many communications on the bill. Um, and I'm sure they reflect much of what was discussed. But let me tell you why I still support this bill. And while I appreciate the reactions of the one-size-fits-all, it has been modified a great deal, so it is no longer one-size-fits-all, though I do appreciate that um, those jurisdictions that don't want to have, uh, you know, that don't want to have the state uh, involved in their zoning process are quite resistant. But let me say why we need to. If we look at so many of the problems that we are trying to adjust and fix here in the state capital that plague our state. Let's look at the rise of poverty. Why is, do we have so many more people in poverty? It's partly due to low wage jobs, change in employment sector, yes, but it's also due to the cost of living. What's one of the single largest portions of that cost of living increase? The cost of housing. Why? Because we have not built enough so we have created, to a degree, some level of our increase in poverty due to housing policies. Secondarily, when we look at all of the work that we are trying to do to address air pollution, where does air pollution come from? Primarily fossil fuel vehicles. Why do we have so many vehicle miles having to be traveled in our state? Because of land use policies because our housing is so far away from our employment sectors. And of course, lower income Californians, lower wage workers have to be even farther from their job centers because of the lack of housing and the cost of housing. Additionally, I, uh, I'll tell a story from my days on the Berkeley City Council, but before that, I totally appreciate that many people feel that a flaw in the bill is that it does not have enough mandates regarding very affordable housing because we have such a shortage of affordable housing and because housing costs so much. But if we do not build more housing, we will never get the cost of housing down because of our supply crisis. But not only that, we when we look at why uh, my two years interim, I was teaching at both UC Berkeley and UC Davis. At UC Berkeley, I was at the Goldman School of Public Policy, and I was teaching about appropriate state interventions to address poverty. One of my speakers was Richard Rothstein. Richard Rothstein is the author of the book, The Color of Law. I recommend that everyone read that book. It is eye-opening. The New York Times, this last Sunday, did a two-column, full-page editorial on much of the subject matter that Rothstein covers in The Color of Law. And it, what, it is about how our housing policies, whether we fully understood it or not, have been directly racist and economically discriminatory. And that the lack of the rules first that prevented African American home ownership initially created diswealth generationally, and that since then the recession, the mortgage crisis targeted African Americans almost uh, very particularly, and now home ownership among black Americans is at its lowest level since pre the elimination of the uh, fair housing, in other words, since the passage of fair housing laws. And additionally, both Rothstein's book and the New York Times editorial talks about how zoning policies were initially developed for the purpose of economically exclusive zoning. So part of what this bill is doing, even though it, if it's not been directly talked about, is unraveling some of those policies that some, do, some were done intentionally, some with misunderstanding, that have created 
economic zones in our communities and kept many people from gaining wealth and kept other people in, in, uh, ex out of housing opportunity. So that's another reason I support the bill. Now finally I want to address another issue around the cries for, well if this bill just had more affordability in it or dealt with providing low income housing more, X or Y community might support it. When I was in the Berkeley City Council in the 1980s, that we, we accepted gladly the last HUD financing for scattered site, fully subsidized public housing. And we were so excited because by accepting that grant, we were going to be allowing housing that was not like ghetto housing, meaning we weren't going to build uh, 20 story, um, you know, one big uh, uh, Section 8 type of unit, but instead we were going to pick 12 locations in the city of Berkeley with 8 to 12 units each, spreading it around, giving people lots of opportunity, and not impacting any one neighborhood too much. Now, you might say, boy, were you all naive. But the entire, what happened? By picking 12 sites throughout the city of Berkeley, the entire community went against it. And we succeeded, and we built that housing, but then the community, in effect, did a veiled recall. They went and created district elections, which they said because they wanted more local control. What was that about in a city of Berkeley? Because they didn't want poor people living next to them, even in a community like Berkeley. Now that housing still exists, and if you drove through Berkeley right now, you probably wouldn't even recognize it, because it was done very well. And I think that the housing that would be built under uh, SB 827 would be done very well. And it did, in uh, Senator Weiner's bill, require a certain amount of affordable units. But I bring it up because very many times when we hear communities talk about, I don't want to have a change in zoning, or we don't want this density, or, or we, you know, we'll support housing, but somewhere else, there is never somewhere else. And so, while well, I would, uh, yes, certainly there could be modifications and improvements to the bill, and if the bill isn't successful this year, there will be lots of people who work on trying to bring it to a place where more of us can support, but I think it's a very important thing we have to confront, how our housing policies have contributed to poverty, have affected and hurt our minority communities, and are, of course are creating much of our air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you.